European Research and Innovation Days 2021. I really hope you enjoyed this morning's discussions. It was absolutely ripe with many great ideas and rich with enlightening debates. Now, for the rest of today and tomorrow, we will be organising the sessions in the same way. We will have a short plenary which will set out the challenge or the topic or the question we want to answer. And we will then break out into five panels where they will seek to answer those questions that were challenges challenge them in the plenary. So there will be five panels, so make sure you can choose the one that addresses it from the angle that you are most interested in, so be sure to pick that up. And don't forget, of course, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and all the social media channels you prefer using the hashtag RIDays21 and RIDayEU. So remember that you can also go and check out the exhibition space, which is already online at ec.europa.eu you forward slash research and innovation forward slash exhibition. I'm sure you'll find the link in the chat and on the platform. And with that, let's get the ball rolling for this afternoon sessions on the various different topics. Our first topic, not surprisingly and very fittingly, is innovation. Welcome. Welcome to the afternoon sessions. We are starting now with a series of plenary sessions followed by panels. And what better topic uh, to start these plenaries than innovation and the way forward for Europe. Europe is seen as a science powerhouse for very obvious reasons. And I would argue with you that Europe is also an innovation house. We are across Europe seeing talent, ideas, entrepreneurship, we create startups like no one else. And that is very much also driving uh, the deployment of research and innovation solutions in our societies and in our economies. In this plenary, uh, to kick off uh, the discussion on innovation, we will have uh, uh, Maria Gabriel, Commissioner for Research and Innovation, and of course Education and Youth with us. And we will have uh, one of Parliament's uh, innovation champions, uh, Christian Ela uh, from the ETRE Committee, to kick off the discussion. And I will say a few words on um, how then the various panels are set up. So, uh, Marielle, let me immediately start with you. Uh, you. When we discuss innovation, you, I think, agree with me that we are good at it, but you also find that we need a slightly more ambitious strategy to really promote it further. So how do you see that, Maria? Well, that's my first message, because we have instruments, we have programs, we are strong in innovation, and I'd like to say thank you. Thank you to you, Jean-Éric, to all the team and all the stakeholders involved, because we have a very strong and solid base, because that's our base. We are a leader in science, we have some strengths in innovation, and I think that we should seize the momentum to transform Europe into a global powerhouse in the new wave of innovation. And for that, first, yes, there is a different context. Remember that our innovation policy dates back to 2010. At the same time, uh, yes, we are seeing uh, new possibilities, creating synergies, first with our strong component with the New Horizon Europe program, the European Innovation Council, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, and our, our European Ecosystem program. So I think that it's really important to see how we can seize this, and that's why we need, we need coherence. The third point is that, yes, actually, we are witnessing a new wave of innovation because very often when we talk about Europe lagging behind we are thinking about digital startups but now there is a fourth wave of innovation with the deep tech startups and here we are already a leader in some fields and if we have something more coherent and operational we can be a real global leader in this field so i think that we need to seize this momentum and that pass for me by tackling some very concrete challenges we need to address the fragmentation because we have very 
very thriving ecosystems everywhere in Europe, but we need to connect them. We need to see how we can facilitate the access to funding, to see how, and that's our work as European Commission, we can provide a more innovation-friendly policy framework, regulatory framework, and after all, yes, to see that we have one extraordinary strength, it's our talented people. We have our talents, we have skilled people, we have people with extraordinary ideas, so that's why it's the right moment to tell them that with a coherent innovation policy, Europe is their home, their hope to, home to develop their ideas, to promote them, and after all, to work on all together for a European global leadership in innovation. Maria, thank you very much. I think this is really uh, the narrative that Europe needs. We need to say that we are strong on innovation, and you're saying it very loud and very clear. Christian, can I, Christian Eda from the European Parliament, Christian, can I turn to you? And uh, could, you, could you tell us where, which are for you the success factors on which uh, we should work um, uh, at EU level, but certainly also in member states, to, to get us uh, in that leadership position. And I know from, from, from discussions in the Parliament that um, this is also for you an important dimension of technological sovereignty for our continent. So could you tell us um, how, how you see us move forward? Thank you. I think we, we are in the third phase of the development of European innovation policy. First, we had a standalone program. We raised the importance of European funding. Um, we, we were aware about how we need cooperation in Europe in order to globally succeed. The second phase, we aligned um, innovation policy along principal political goals, the challenges, uh, the twin strategy. And I think now we're getting in the third phase, and this is an integrative phase. I mean, in Horizon Europe, in the regulation, we refer to the program needing to inspire innovation-friendly regulation. Um, I think the coherence of um, research policy, industrial policy, our environmental goals, the, the digital dimension is of utmost importance. And I think they're good examples. So the Innovation Ecosystem Program in Pillar 3 in Horizon, as well as the EIT and the European Partnership, then the Industrial, industrial Technology Roadmaps under the European Research Era, the ecosystem approach in the industrial policy, which reflects that all. So I think right now, where we had been delivering um, on the general goals, now it's the time to integrate um, R&D um, completely in the general European policies and align specifically with the member states. And the third dimension, which I would like to mention, and I, I'm very pleased that the Commission takes that also into consideration, is looking to the citizens. The citizen dimension is something we should reach out. Divide. So move on. Oh, Christian, thank you very much. Um, there, there are, of course, many, many uh, aspects of innovation, which I said we will explore um, in, uh, in five panels in a moment. I mean, there's one dimension which I find very striking in innovation is that where in science we sometimes see differences between uh, national research and innovation systems, which some which are better equipped to deliver results than others, at least for now. In innovation, this is really happening everywhere. Uh, so I think so nurturing this, um, this innovation across all your member states, Maria, is very much part also of that strategy. Yes, absolutely. I think that it's our chance with innovation to, to innovate uh, and to tackle some of our weaknesses in a new way. Because yes, talented people and good ideas are everywhere in Europe. What we need, and that's, that's something very, very close, to my, very close to my heart, is really to give voice to this new generation of innovators. And I think that we started very successfully to do it because for the last three, four months, we have the Unicorns Group, we have the Ecosystem Innovation Leaders Group. We have really to pay attention on how to bring more women in this innovation field. So I think that that's somehow a first phase, really to give them voice, to listen to them. They were extraordinary. In a very short time, they deliver a very concrete proposals. And Jean-Éric, you know that actually we are analyzing very attentively what are these proposals and how together with, with them to build a cohesive 
coherent framework. And I think that we should seize the momentum because we have Horizon Europe program. We have now this co-creation process with them. At the same time, let's pay attention to what's happened with our member states with the resilience and recovery facility plans. Because our analysis shows that there will be important investments in innovation. There will be incentives uh, everywhere. For me, the challenge, it will be together with all the innovators in all our regions to identify where we have already this critical mass of investments, a common wish to advance in this direction, and rapidly to show that because we'll scale this at European level, we can advance more rapidly. That's really the, the, the direction of, uh, of this um, uh, innovation in Europe. And uh, Maria, if you agree, I would also argue that there is genuinely um, a, a European uh, innovation way. Um, we, you, you, Maria, you spoke of, of deep tech innovation a moment ago. Christian, uh, when you look at our assets, it's clearly our engineering culture, our amazing science. So innovation is very much, I think, supporting our industries. So how, how do you see, you, you mentioned it yourself, uh, th this need for integration and synergies. Is our industrial policy sufficiently connected to our startup ecosystems? Is there more that we can do? And how do you see um, our industry really move into its green and digital transformation through this innovation path? I mean, I think the, the, the new EIC is emblematic for that kind of amalgam between um, research and innovation and the new generation of startups and, and let's say, the economic dimension and the, the, the perspectives in, in, in Europe. And for the first time, we, we create crossover instruments which are not asking the others to be integrated. I think we have these integrative instruments for the first time. And they show ambition and they show something which is um, related to all what we had been formulating in terms of ambition, and that is a, a certain risk-driven approach. I think um, if we really want to succeed, if we want to cross bridges or build bridges, um, I think um, we need um, to have a more risk-driven approach. And I think the, the instrument in the given program and the very fact that, for example, ecosystems, as they had been formulated in industrial policy, is no longer just and has no longer just an economic perspective. The ecosystem describes this, this, this delicate balance between um, investment, um, between, um, let's say, economical ambitions, uh, technology, but also um, and the innovation factor. And so I think on both sides, in, in the classical research program, we were reaching out to new instruments like the EIC. On the other hand, uh, industrial policy, for example, is for the first time not formulated just in economic ambitions. It's describing this delicate and important ecosystem, which is often driven by research and innovation. And I think that is a very promising approach. Christian, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, our capacity also to accept that we fail. Uh, this is certainly one of the cultural uh, changes which is, which is needed. Not so much, I would argue, from our entrepreneurs. They are aware of that, but it's indeed more at, at the policy level that we need to, to work on that. Um, I mean, we are inspired often by great partners across the world. And indeed, uh, in the US, uh, the equivalent of the European Innovation Council, which exists there as well, is they say that the measure of our success is our failure rate. Because if we don't fail, we don't disrupt either. And that is indeed, Christian, very much what the European Innovation Council will try to do. Christian Ella, uh, Commissioner Gabriel Maria, thank you very much for your introduction. We will now um, move in a, in a short moment. We start at um, 2.30 uh, Brussels time with um, five um, uh, key panels which really cover uh, the ground of innovation policy. We will have a panel on green and digital transition of Europe through innovation. I think this is a distinct feature of Europeans' innovation way, be impact driven have a direction, really support this green and digital transformation. We will then have um, a second panel uh, to see how we can leverage innovation across Europe. Maria mentioned that earlier on. This is happening, but we can do and need to do more. Then obviously, um, both of you mentioned talent. The talent is in Europe. 
the talent is less and less leaving Europe, but we need to attract more talent to Europe. There are many good reasons for innovators across the globe. I hope some of you are watching us to join us in this innovation um, uh, path in Europe, and we will explain uh, why and how. We will then indeed go through the innovation ecosystems. That's a fourth panel. Innovation ecosystems at EU level, around the European Innovation Council, around the Institute for Technology, as Christian Ayla underlined earlier on, in this uh, European Innovation Forum, which will be launched in the next um, a few weeks, connecting national, uh, regional, university, industry-based ecosystems. This is really the way to go. We'll explore that. And then in the last panel, the, the of course, central question uh, for Europe and for innovation generally, certainly for Europe, is with all these great innovators and ideas, how do we help them scale up? Scale up fast would be one dimension of it. I would argue scale up in a robust manner and scale up in Europe. So that will be for the fifth panel. So join us back at 2.30. Um, Choose a panel which you find uh, useful. Maybe you can hop a bit between panels. Tell us whether you think uh, we are really now getting it right and help uh, the Commission, Commissioner Mary Gabriel and her colleagues draw out this path and this strategy for an innovative Europe. Thank you very much. throughout the introductory plenary session on innovation. We have acknowledged the strong demand for research and innovation in Europe. We identified innovation as a key factor in recovering from the pandemic, boosting jobs and growth and job creation and ensuring a more sustainable future in Europe and beyond. As Commissioner Gabriel said this morning, R&I is essential, not just for building back, but building forward better. So now it's time to break up into the first of a series of five plenary sessions. As we heard Jean-Éric saying just then, we are going to look at the important challenge from five different angles. So firstly, innovation and the green and digital transitions. Secondly, how to leverage innovation across Europe. Number three, growing and mobilizing talent. Fourthly, innovation ecosystems. And finally, the fifth session is on scaling up smart invest in investments. So pick the session that most appeals to you and really join in the discussion. Give it your all and share your thoughts online, of course, using the hashtag RIDaysEU. We'll see you again at half past two.